St. Maurice, the Moorish patron saint of the guild, appears everywhere in the decorations, and this happened at the Polish Peace Treaty in 1920s. It speaks of the cold statues of the Moor clad only in a loin cloth stand all about the building, his curly head wound with a red sash and ornamented with great gold earrings is woven into the drapery and an allegorical picture representing the Moor conferring his blessing upon the Riga and establishing her commercial greatness. I repeat, establishing her commercial greatness, and this is at Riga, is the central panel of the ceiling frescoes in the conference hall. And this was the only image that I could find, and it was tagged. In my studies, I even found the treaty with like seven red seals with their stamps on them on the treaty and everything. But more than likely, they was having treaties because they was fighting over the Moorish Empire welcoming the delegates, which expressed his belief that the peace would soon crown the work of the Riga Conference, a peace which will be a solid peace based on the principles of justice. Only these principles, he added, can affect and maintain peace. It can never be lasting unless based upon respect for the free national rights of governments, true indeed, and national rights of the people. If he's speaking about national rights, he's speaking about nationality and all nations being in universal peace. Now again, this painting representing an allegorical picture representing the Moor conferring his blessing upon Riga and establishing her commercial greatness is the central panel of the ceiling fresco in the conference hall. They are saying that this peace parlay opens at Riga, right? It says that there was Caesars, kings and queens. It speaks of Catherine the Great. Medieval gloom marked the opening of the Polish-Russian-Soviet peace conference here this afternoon. And this reading was from the Springfield Republic in 1920. I wanted to give a quick demonstration. General Notes, Washington, December 19th. It is admitted at the State Department that William R. Lewis, United States Consul at Tangier, has been recalled at the request of the Moorish government and that the president is now considering the appointment of his successor. Now again, after the Moorish government's request, the president of the United States, which at that time was Benjamin Harrison, 1889, the 23rd U.S. president, he made a consideration for an appointment for a new consul at Tangier. So he was in direct communication with the Moorish government in 1889, Benjamin Harrison. And the William R. Lewis, the consul that the Moorish government didn't like, I couldn't find him in my research. But I thought this was a good example in regards to the United States president knowing exactly who the Moorish government was. This is another one from the 1800s. The enemy, the Republicans meet at Chicago. Chairman Jones calls the National Convention to order, and he speaks directly about the Moors. Now, these are the words from Chairman Jones on the record. When Robert Bruce, King of Scotland, Scotland, lay upon his dying bed, he requested that his heart should be taken from his body and borne by knightly hands to the Savior's sepulcher, which is Jerusalem. We went over some of these demonstrations already, but not in this detail, in regards to the Christian Scottish Kenneth, who can slay three moors and take three moors' heads, in regards to the three-leaf clover, in regards to St. Patrick chaining the serpent, and every Monday, the serpent says, it's a long Monday, St. Patrick. After his death, James, Earl of Douglas, undertook the sacred mission and with the heart encased it in a casket, set out upon his pilgrimage to the Holy Land. On their way, himself and comrades were set upon by a host of Moorish warriors. Though they fought with all the valor of moral men, they were borne backward by sheer force of numbers and their overthrow seemed certain. When Douglas, drawing from the priceless casket, cast it far into the midst of the incoming host and cried out, Lead on, heart of Bruce, we follow thee, the knights of Scotland, never defeated while following a Bruce, pushed forward and won the day. So you see, in regards to the Scottish, was assisting in the conquest against the Moors. In regards to the 33rd parallel or the Mason-Dixon line, all that stuff was ran, but then they abandoned it. After they had full control, they abandoned it. 
And that's why it got took up by Albert Pike. The Southern jurisdiction claimed that they originated in Charleston, South Carolina in 1801, that the body became inactive a few years later and remained dormant until resurrected by Albert Pike in 1867. The truth about masonry in the Carolinas in the 1800s was them studying Prince Moore or Uncle Moore in the Carolinas in the 1800s. He was known as an adept in Islam. He was a sheik. He was a Moor. And all these Europeans was trying to kidnap the Moorish princes who had all the adept gnosis. And they was trying to translate all of his writings. All of his writings have five point stars on them. Some of them's upright and some of them's upside down, just like Noble Drew Ali has. Uncle Moore in the Carolinas. Again, all his stuff has five point stars on it. It speaks about many faces will be turned white and black when they raise from the grave and run this great race, but they must remain faithful. And that's with nationality of knowing thyself, honoring thy father and mother so that our days be long upon the earth. All of that. And that's just why you have to accept the facts. All things come from Moorish Gnosis. So these Europeans having their conventions and their meetings and their parlays, they're always speaking of the Moors. It specifically stated or they specifically stated on record that the Scottish assisted in the conquest against the Moors. And when you have the Scottish right, again, when Albert Pike came across it, it was dormant, which means it had no connection with the Grand Orient of France. Just like with the Cerno controversy and all that, he didn't want nothing to do with that section or those lodges because they was directly connected with the Grand Orient of France. But that 33rd parallel would switch. Sometimes the Moors would have it and then it'd get taken over and Europeans would have it and they would use it
Now is the time. You're going to do it later on. You're going to figure out you forgot. And you're going to be like, damn, what was that, uh, what was that book called again? You're going to figure out you forgot. They say man knows not by being told, the pages unfold I study, study, study national principles gold Still the fiat they hold, reaching and clinging for de facto To save they soul, save they soul I know my destiny as above, so below Read Gnosis off with the dial, plates blinding me as it glow High shimmer, had amnesia, now I remember Got the message from Drew Ali, so there was no return to sender Figure out you forgot, figure out you forgot What's it called again? What we study a lot It's the Moorish Quran and it's still full of eye Study, 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 you can stay on top, top, top You can stay on top, top, top You gon' figure out you forgot You can stay on top, top, top Get all these books in your life because now is the time Now is the time